Today we are talking about the Rupert Neve Designs Dual Diode Bridge 5254 Compressor. Man, that name gets me every time. Let's do it again. Dual Diode Bridge 5254. Not bad for a German, right? Looking at the 5254 for the first time, it becomes quite obvious that the inspiration was Neve's 2254, the first diode bridge compressor that Neve did in the 60s, late 60s, early 70s, I believe. But instead of doing just a reissue, Rupert Neve Designs took the concept a lot further and did some improvements on the original idea which I find to be very, very useful. So let's start with the control that obviously many people will use the most, and that is timing. And timing is nothing more than just attack and release combined. It took me some time, but actually the variation and the settings are very, very good. And depending on the ratio settings, attack and release can vary a bit. Next to that, you have the fast setting, which actually decreases the attack and the release portion by 70%. So this is actually doubling up your timing values. And then it actually becomes just your normal compressor. You have your ratio settings and people that know the 2254 will notice that you don't have a limiter mode. Many people that I know that use the 2254 weren't a fan of the limiter mode because actually, no pun intended, it limited the sound of the 2254. Instead, you have an 8 to 1 ratio, which is actually kind of crass and great for those smacky drums or if you want to really drive the compressor. I'm not missing the limiter mode actually and next to that you have the threshold of course you know like determining when the compressor should work and then you have the sidechain insert so you actually have uh, TRS inputs on the back that you can use as a sidechain for the 5254 and you can engage that here then there is the parameter that I really admire, and that is the high pass filter for the detection signal. Instead of like having a, a fixed um, high pass, you actually can blend between 20 hertz and 250 hertz. And you can filter out the low end portion of the detection signal. That comes really handy when you have a mixing bus or a drum bus, especially like electronic music where there is a lot of low end energy and the compressor starts to overreact. Then you can simply filter out the low end portion and you have a really nice um, relaxed signal. But actually, I have to tell you, the 5254 is so relaxed when it starts to compress and it's always like really, really mild and silky smooth. It's not like that you have this crass pumping with the 5254. It actually always keeps it kind of like musical, but nonetheless, it's sometimes really valuable to have that high pass filter for the sidechain. Everything that I mentioned here is true for the right hand side. So you have two separate um, mono channels that you can combine with the link control. And that took me some time because actually instead of like having like, you know, like link and then you have the left hand side to control the right hand side, what it's actually doing is if link is activated, the channel that is compressing the most is then the master channel so to say so that it, so you you should be you should be focus, focusing on on your gain reduction if because if you have like the right hand side to like minus 25 db uh, for the threshold and you're playing around here and you're wondering why isn't it working it's actually because this probably channel is compressing more than the left hand channel and that means then that this becomes the master channel for the for the link uh, uh, channel and that's something that I had to work with but you know it's like a five minute thing but you st I stumbled over it the next thing is the gain control the gain control of obviously is uh, for the makeup gain and this is a very clean uh, makeup gain with 20 dB of makeup gain and that makes a whole lot of sense won't go into the details that much but a diode um, bridge compressor needs a very clean gain because the diode itself is very sensitive. So um, you need to work with very low input values at first to make it then with a, a to then use a lot of makeup gain in order to 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 get that 
back that signal in layman's terms. Okay, so a clean gain for a diode bridge compressor is very, very important. That's the reason why diode bridge compressors are actually um, kind of expensive compared to other ideas like a VCA because you need a very clean and very good signal path in order to utilize the diode. Okay, the last thing that I want to mention and the thing that I love the most is the blend control because the blend control actually, like I said, is a blend control that determines uh, between the dry and the wet signal. So you can do, like you probably guessed by now, do parallel compression within the 5254. And that is magical. Because I like to use the 5254 a lot on the drum bus. It has that smack, that mid-range. And to use that in a, in a, in a parallel setting is, 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 is just king. It's, it's really king because you retain the dynamics and the transients, but you, you mix the smack, the mid-range smack of the 5254 into that. And that makes for a very dynamic yet characterful sound. The sound of the 5254 is lovely in the mid-range. You get that sort of like nice consistency in the mid-range. And I love that on bass, man, on DI bass sounds or on, on synth sounds, it's just amazing. Let me show you what I mean. So I have this DI bass here. This is without the 5254. And now let me engage the 5254. Listen to what is happening to the ghost notes, especially. How much sub layer there is to that now. It's like you would actually use an octave shifter, you know, a little bit. Add some low end to the original signal. Without, it's thin and not really pleasing. Just listen to that. Love it. Yeah, very thin, stressful. If, if I listen to that, and I find it stressful to listen to that, but the 52 is just doing magic. And I mean, I'm on a medium fast release now, and I could, you know, make it more crass. But it doesn't sound stressed out, even though I'm compressing actually quite a lot. You hear that, right? It's the mid range pops out after I disengage the 5254 in a not very pleasant way. It sounds like, like stressed. Interesting fact is it's actually already running through my Siemens um, EQ, which has nice transformers built into that. So if I disengage that, you know, let me just disengage the, the Siemens, you hear that the, the sound will become even more digital. You know, it's very flat. But if I engage the 5254 back in, Great for soulful tracks, great for house. If you track into that, it's very easy 
to mix the signal because it's already sounding great. No plugins needed, n nothing, you know, maybe a little bit more like like a sidechain uh, digital if you want to sidechain it to the kick drum, if you're, you're making house grooves, obviously just from a standpoint of the tonality of the signal, it's already great. When I heard the first audio examples of the 5254, I was like, man, that mid-range smack, that punch, is exactly what I need on a master bus. But it turned out I love it for recording as well, and even more, because the way that you interact with the dual diode bridge compressor is very intuitive. Because you don't have that plethora of settings, essentially what you have is a timing setting which controls both the attack and the release time of the compressor. And you're just switching through different settings. You have a fast knob and that's it. And my German heart was like, nein, das ist nicht korrekt. You know, I would love to have as many parameters as possible. But actually it makes sense the more I work with it. I'm in the studio now recording some stuff for my upcoming releases and I work for the first time with really good musicians. And I was uh, three people in one, you know, I was the arranger, the composer, and I was the recording engineer. So not only did I have to tell the musicians what they should play and how they should play it, I also needed to record everything at the same time and that was really stressful in some areas because i was very inexperienced i have to say that when i'm here in my studio i can you know change all my effect settings uh, to a degree that nobody can really distinguish the difference anymore but in the heat of the action tracking sounds tracking everything sometimes having a limited amount of parameters is a deal breaker i have had a keyboard player and he was playing some roads and then he was playing some plucky moke percussive sounds on top and let's be honest you don't need to dial in the exact settings what you need is a good tone to track into the daw and with the 5254 you can do that you know you have your settings and like oh okay this sound is more percussive i maybe get a, a longer attack and release time because then I emphasize a little bit more like the transients or if I have something like a pad sound I maybe go for a very fast attack and, re and release time or an automatic setting because I just want to um, control like over, over bloating of the mid-range when the pad is like going fully up uh, when the cutoff is increasing, right? So there are these different settings that you have in your mind instead of like, oh my God, this is now, which is it? Is it, is it attack time 22.5 or is it release time 32.1 or what is it exactly? Sometimes when you want to work, you have to use something that is very intuitive. And because of the sound, I find myself using the 5254 a lot on parallel, going for a four to one, a to one, having a really smacky compression and just blending in it into the original dry sound. Makes a whole lot of sense and gives you a very dynamic sound whilst being more compressed and, and more ballsy. Really love that. The next thing I want to show you is acoustic drums. And I have this drum loop that I'm using for such a long time now, so I think it's good for a comparison of all the different compressors. So let me play that now. Okay, it's a little bit louder. So I have this A to one again, fast compression, really smacking the hell out of it. You can hear that the kick drum is a little bit too aggressive to, for my taste, so I take it out.
maybe use a medium fast setting. Ah, a little bit. Yeah. You hear that? How everything just sits very well together. And now... That mid-range is exactly what I'm talking about. It's very pleasing to my ear. And now... I will decrease the threshold. And you hear that pumping. You hear that nice smack. But what I do now is use the blend control to mix back in the original signal. And you can hear that. The original signal adds a little bit more dynamic back to it, but the mid-range smack that you get from the 5254 is just adorable. It's just great. And you can play around with the settings, of course. That's obviously also great for drum roots. Even though the signal now is a little bit louder, it doesn't give me that pleasing tonality. So now back in with a 52-54, I just have that lovely smack. Now let's take out the side chain completely. And without... I mean, depending on the mix and depending on the material, this can work wonders. And yeah, that's just lovely for so many different reasons. I love it. Okay, I think the next thing should be some 808 sounds because many people nowadays are using 808s. Typical 808 sub. Um, if I now engage the 5254, you instantly hear how this annoying mid range becomes controllable and manageable. You know, we are making a percussive signal now, and this is a 50%, you know, so if I go back full to full compressed, you hear how a nice curve is created for the transients, but let me go a little bit back, make a little bit more of a subtle setting, but just listen to the mid-range. how you instantly have more overtones and even though it's louder now it's, pers it's, it's obviously louder let me just match the levels
not only do I have a more percussive sound, I also have this very managed mid-range. It's overblown without the compressor. It's too fat for me. And and it's not it's not like in a sense of like a cool low end, it's just annoying. But that's exactly what I want. A really precise, nice low end. I will probably have to work around like in the 80 or 90 hertz area a little bit still, but it's way more controlled. And that's what you want from a compressor, but sometimes if you just compress the low end, it starts to lose its liveliness or it starts to pump. But here, no sidechain engage, nothing. Works really, really well. The last thing that I want to show you is a Deep House mix bus that I have. And there is obviously um, a lot of loudness in there already. It's, it's a very dense signal, but this can work sometimes, right? Um, because people think that this diode bridge compressor might be a good glue compressor, and I have to agree, but still I would use it mostly on single sounds, but let's, let's try it out on the master bus. <laughs> So that's with it, without. Let's put it back in. I mean, what can I say? It works. Makes it very controlled. I think the kick drums are a little bit too much in the detection signal, so let's let's try that with the sidechain. Try out the auto setting. Okay, that overblown mid range is very controlled now. That's great. But on the Massabus, sometimes. Parallel processing is also good.
lot of nice presence and mid-range control. So depending on the material, it also works on the master bus. What can I say? This is a very flexible compressor. Still drum sounds, bass, that's where it where it's at for me most of the time. But of course, it shows you that you can use this on so many different signals. It's a very flexible compressor. Okay, that's my review of the 5254 Dual Diode Bridge Compressor. Man, those names. Um, I really enjoy it. I think it's a lovely, lovely compressor. It's very specialized, I have to say. I wouldn't use it as my first go-to compressor. It's something that I would use in combination with something else. Um, but at the same time, it's also a really nice compressor for people that don't want to overthink the production. If you are in the in the in the mood of tracking something, recording something, and you just work, and you don't want to fiddle with all those different knobs, the dual diode bridge compressor gives you a, a run for its money. And I like the sound and I like the tone. If you have some questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'm really happy to see all of you guys talking about gear. It's always always really exciting to get in touch with you and i hope that you like my approach to gear um i know you would like to see more like technical uh talks sometimes but i'm not the technical guy uh, when it comes to producing i need something that feels and sounds right and that's where i think uh, i can give you more insights because what's the point of having a compressor that can do everything but you never use it right or what's the what's the point of having a synthesizer that can emulate all the available synthesizers but nothing that you create with it is really worth using in the production or using it in the production environment that's no benefit for me so i'd always try to give you the experience that i get of using the gear on a daily basis what i think of it what 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 i get as an initial feedback that might be not objective true but still i think it's worth listening to and that gives you sometimes an even better um impression of gear all right that's my review of the dual diode bridge compressor from rupert neve designs I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment down below and subscribe to my channel. It would really help me out. And I see you in the next video. Oh, and by the way, I constantly try to upload new audio examples from the gear that I have in my studio. Do me a favor and send me some audio tracks that are royalty free that I can use and where the content ID uh, is of YouTube is not giving me a strike. Then I would be really happy to use that in one of my audio examples. And of course, I would also give you a shout out if you send me a demo track. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I see you in the next video.